Hi, this is Decentered Media, conversations about community-focused communications for positive social change. Hello, Rob Watson here for Decentered Media, and this is our regular um, conversation, discussion, uh, that is part of the Decentered Media Meetup, which we do every two weeks on Wednesday evenings. Um, if you want to take part in our meetup, you can sign up via uh, patreon.com slash Decentered Media and you can register and you'll get information about how uh, how to join us on Zoom. It's uh, every other week, every fortnight uh, from 6.30 to about 7.30, 8pm. Uh, and each week, what we each session, what we want to do is have a conversation about issues uh, related to community media and community focused communication. So that broad sense of engaging people and uh, um, uh, connecting people through media that is made by people in communities themselves for people in communities themselves. So it's that DIY media, grassroots media, and that participative element of media. And what we wanted to have a conversation about uh, this week is the idea of an ethical framework for our media, for our community media, and the way that we are able to generate and support engagement on a broad basis, which is defined by uh, certain principles uh, which relate to a, a, a socially uh, accountable form of engagement. You'll have to forgive me, I've come down with a cold, um, which means that I'm, I'm kind of not firing on all cylinders. And I wanted to do this recording a couple of days ago, but I didn't feel up to it. So I'm, I've got a coffee. I'm going to try and power through it now. And the notes for it will be available on the blog that goes out with this post. And I'll send it to the uh, Decentered Media Patreon subscribers in advance of our conversation. Uh, so I want to try and get things out in advance so that we can have a, a, a thorough conversation each week, uh, each session. And it's really uh, uh, great to kind of have an opportunity to explore some of these ideas because <clears throat> these ideas are often discussed, if you like, from a, more, a systematic point of view, from a, a political point of view, from an industrial point of view, from a, a systems-led point of view. And and my, my kind of way of... Um, understanding community media and community focused communications uh, is from an individual point of view and always asking the question how should we respond and as individuals and thinking for ourselves so that sense of individual personal accountability is what frames the moral and ethical discussions that we might have about the use of media to support our and, and enhance our community life and our, our sense of um, engagement with one another. So the the the, the precepts for this come. Uh, we talked in the previous uh, session about pragmatism and about using. Uh, so I, I take a fairly pragmatic model of these things. I think ideology can be useful to frame certain debates and discussions, but I'm not. Uh, uh, I'm sceptical of an ideological approach. Similarly, you know, kind of a systems theory type approach I'm sceptical of as well because when it boils down to it is the the principle of individual value for each person and what their contribution is or could potentially could be. And how do we set up a framework of communications? Which on the one hand, uh, you know, we rightly criticise the, uh, the, 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 the mass media, the, the industrial scale media, because it's very much based around systems and regulations and routines and newspaper organisations and television companies. They adopt a pattern. Uh, it's, a, it's an approach which is very efficient. It's very, um, it, 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 it can create some really interesting content, but us as users and individuals are kind of separate from that and it's run by professionals and it's regulated uh, through market forces or by state regulation in some cases. The other side of that is what we've witnessed with the rise of social media. So X, formerly Twitter and YouTube and Facebook were, were left as individuals to engage in a way 
which is often antagonistic and can often be uh, misinforming and often doesn't create a centre ground for engagement and debate and discussion and mutual understanding. So there are some principles that I think are inherent within community media about accountability, which come from an approach, an ethical approach, which is about people working together and people collaborating and people being able to develop a shared sense of uh, coherent understanding and deliberation of their different experiences, their different points of view, and and thinking really um, how we move forward and and what we learn from the past experiences in terms of you know shaping future experiences and laying the groundwork for future generations to participate in a constructive form of media engagement and and telling those stories you know tell being part of a culture which is able to articulate itself to itself not just through you know i'm not saying that um i'll phrase this in the in the way that comes to mind which is a, a grievance based form of engagement with one another where there's a demand that we address past uh, grievances absolutely we should recognize where people come from uh, but we've also got to do the work of thinking where are we going and on what basis do we draw together communities and allies in order to be able to facilitate positive long-lasting sustainable change that accommodates people from different traditions and with different heritages and different perspectives and brings people together so it's for me it's a social democratic project is to support a form of participative and collaborative community media where we're engaged with one another in order to find our way through into the things that we should be doing in the future and to reflect on where we've come from and what disparities and what uh, inherited uh, or assumed uh, differences that have maybe created differential um, uh, understandings within society and differential access to resources and uh, uh, access to power access to decision making those kind of things so it's it's about how do we articulate those voices which are traditionally most marginalized but do so in a way that doesn't just create a sense of um, pushback but is actually a positive and creative uh, uh, way of doing this so from an ethical point of view i think there's a kind of framework that we can kind of look at and this for me is 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 within the boundaries of a a, a a a tolerant and pluralistic model so a social democratic model is kind of what works for, for me and within that you're looking at what kind of legislation you have what kind of institutional frameworks there are what we consider as social norms what the media and technology itself does what kind of international an intercultural collaboration and cooperation we have and how that continuous dialogue within that is is kind of if you man, managed and then this is kind of shaped by a, set, a, a number of things which give us a uh, a kind of direct set of uh, imperatives uh, a set of uh, things that we can action which are you know which we can we can look at you know so the role of transparency in the way that we frame our communication the role of inclusivity and diversity within the framework of our communication, uh, a commitment to accuracy and integrity of the information that we were putting forward, that it can be verified by other people, uh, but also a respect for our privacy and respect for our uh, individual um, uh, conscience, consciences, is that the right phrase? Uh, and in, in that context, inevitably, there will be con uh, conflict. But how do we resolve uh, matters of conflict that might arise? And, and what are the steps that we need to put in place for in engagement, uh, positive uh, educational engagement that brings people together to learn? Uh, and what social responsibilities do we have uh, to address uh, inequalities and uh social diver social you know, issues where people have not uh, been treated well in the past so there's a, a a need for us to promote a sense of democratic discourse 
It needs to be tied in with a, a sense of professional development and it needs to be legally compliant. And crucially, I think there also now needs to be a strong emphasis on environmental responsibility. And that's something that we can cover in more detail. This, I suppose, is more of a framework that allows us to consider some of these issues over time um, and by um, come back to these conversations this is a starting point of discussion uh, i don't know the answers and i think that's always a great place to start from but it is about to saying, well look, look as the circumstances change how can we find our way through forward into a, a new settlement for democratic engagement with one another that avoids conflict avoids antagonism uh, in, avoids inequality promotes access accessibility and crucially promotes a sense of responsibility and and is based on a respect for the value of each person's character um, as opposed to merely labeling people uh, as one thing or another but looking at what people drives people what motivates people <coughs> so i suppose the framework for this is is around the idea of equality and social justice broadly as a set of as, as an ethical set of principles which in in modern society are broadly speaking is the kind of hallmark of of social democratic thinking is that there's a a need for us to have equality of opportunities not necessarily equality of outcomes uh, but definitely equality of opportunities because we each have to you know play our role um and and we may play that well or we may play that Badly, uh, but there are issues about people uh, being subject to uh, abandonment, if you like, or not having a fair crack of the whip, which I think is is common within most social democratic societies. And there's a kind of just despite some of the rhetoric that we might see through mainstream media, there is a convergence around this idea of how do we functionally make society work uh, that is as optimal for everybody uh, so that we've all got an opportunity to play a role and we're all valued within our society regardless of our uh, economic background regardless of our uh, ethnic background regardless of our class background these factors still are really important uh, but the question is how do we create a platform where we move forward and we and, and, and we get the best out of it because otherwise you know, for me, inequality is really about wasted opportunity. Waste, it's a waste of time to write people off. And it's a waste of time to have a moralistic and a judgment, judgmental view of people in on the basis that there is something about their association with a certain uh, a class group or, or community within a particular place because you're not looking at the individuals and you're not seeing what their potential is. So for me, that, that kind of is my ethical driver with this and it's the sense that there's a uh, solidarity within our community so what what is community you know community is nothing without a sense of purpose and solidarity uh, and i think some of the things that we've uh, adopted over the last say the post-war uh, the, the the 20th late 20th century and into the 21st century have become very much individualistic and very atomized, where it's about getting what you can for yourself rather than looking at the collective benefit. So there's a lack of solidarity amongst uh, people of different classes. And the uh, the social sciences tell us that people now from different classes have less opportunity to mix. So people from uh, uh, affluent communities or affluent families and people from working class or disadvantaged communities and families have less opportunity to interact. Uh, they, they, we, we live in parallel worlds, you know, that kind of two nations uh, idea that we, we have a, a, a supremely well-off uh, elite and a largely impoverished, uh, certainly in the UK, uh, uh, everybody else just has to kind of muddle through and we're not really interacting with each other. We have a very segregated kind of society and our media is is, is often very segregated as well. The chances of <coughs> somebody from a working class background reaching the heights of running some of our public media organisations or running, you know, editors of newspapers is very, very low these days. Whereas in the 1960s and 70s, there was more chance that you could come from 
uh, a working class background and rise up the rise up to one of those positions now the meritocratic meritocratic approach now that that doesn't really exist so Social democratic societies are often founded around the idea of a welfare state with adequate social safety nets and politically, you know, there's there's uh, uh, some it's very contentious among some people to recognise uh, that there is a need for a, a, a decent welfare state that does make some provision. And I view it in this way. I, I think it's about risk taken. I think if you if you can reduce the if 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 you take a risk as an entrepreneur and everything falls apart you might make a big mistake and every you lose everything because you just didn't get the business right should that mean that you are then destitute that you are then going to lose everything as well um so there has to be some way of moderating that and putting in place a welfare system and a welfare state and a healthcare system and access to public transport that enables you to take risks to go and get do things which would because you've got this underpinning that's the logic that i mean i'm not i'm not expecting anybody to share my view but that's kind of what informs me that we need uh we can't operate as individuals where what robert keegan calls is we're embeduals and that society in which we're embedded has to be functional to the point that it will deliver innovation and it will deliver uh, risk taking and entrepreneurship but if you don't have the assets and the security behind you you can't be a risk taker and an entrepreneur and that's where i think the you know the, the benefit of a of a well organized efficiently managed welfare system is useful because you can you can diverge you know you don't have to just then follow what your previous generations of your family have done you can as an individual say no i uh, yeah i i, I you know, is, it, is it Thomas Hardy and Jude the Obscure? You know, it's kind of made a lasting impression on me, it's as depressing as, as the book is. But the idea that, you know, we've got to be able to uh, intermix in our social classes and nowhere is this more important than in our media. So we talk about levelling up. Levelling up, you can look at that as a political uh, uh, characteristic of, you know, a, a particular form of, uh, opportunistic and populist politics but actually there's a there's a, there's something that resonates with us about equality of opportunity and that we have to but that has to come from investment and it has to come from validation and support and it has to enable people to get on and show what they have the potential to achieve um, so you need to you know you, you have to create the the framework within which that takes is is able to happen so our media is no different from any of the forms of our economy. And in many ways, our media is too narrow because there are fewer opportunities for people to actually take part. And community media is one of the few areas that people from people who are disabled, people who are from you know, non-traditional backgrounds are able to get into uh, different media organisations, like take part in radio stations, uh, start their own social media channels, uh, because it isn't so structured by middle class opportunities and networks of who you know. So, is, is, is it this? This is an ethical issue, as far as I'm concerned, because it's about valuing the individual and what contributions we make. Um, and, and despite the systemic weight of a of a class structured media system, now that takes me into the realms of politics. But eth ethics and politics are, are closely related anyway. Then there's the idea of you know to so that kind of takes us into the, the the realm of democracy and participation is that in order to have a thriving democracy, people have got to be able to participate and express their views and have got the barriers that exist have got to be lowered. You know, the one of the things that is the precept of, you know, uh, an engaged form of democratic media is what Raymond Williams said, which was that, um, you know, to... to we have to, to to make media more accessible and more de democratic. We have to deprofessionalize it. Professional uh, structures that are erected within the media industries are often uh, there to keep people out because you don't have the right professional kind of training. You don't have the right professional background, qualifications, the right kind of education. Therefore, you can't participate in it. But social media has come along and it's blown that out of the water because if you can afford and get access to a relatively low cost 
uh, mobile device, uh, you can create and share media in a way that bypasses a lot of the you know, the institutional elites. And we're seeing that with technology. We're seeing the rise <coughs> that technology plays in terms of shaping and changing who has access. And that's, you know, it, it's, it's overwhelming at times to see the proliferation of different uh, uh, discussions. And I think uh, Nick Robinson at the BBC uh, was uh, talking this week. He talked about how, uh, a lot of people have switched off uh, the Today programme, the Radio 4 news programme in the mornings. They've lost a significant number of viewers. His argument was that people are, new are news averse. And uh, so clearly the pushback on social media was that it's ridiculous to say that. What it is, is people have access in unprecedented ways to other forms of information. And I haven't listened to the Today programme must be now for five, six years, really. I, I just never tune in anymore. Whereas I used to be an avid listener, and it would be, you know, it would start my day every day to be listen, you know, glued to Radio Four. Um, now it's Twitter and it's other social media, YouTube, it's other and podcasts, it's other social media platforms. So it's the gatekeeping which all of a sudden the technology has changed how and when we do this. So it's how we respond to this and what the this is why the ethics is really important what are the values that drive those that proliferation what are people actually articulating are they standing up for people's human rights and dignity in the process of articulating discussions is it an inclusive form of dialogue uh, does it uh, support a, a, a sense of fairness uh, and is it open to collaboration and cooperation? And there are many facets to this about freedom of speech, uh, sustainable development and other elements this interconnects with. Uh, so ethics are never uh, something purely for themselves. They're, they're, uh, they're there as a, as a guide, as, a, as a, 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 a point towards which the compass uh, orients us rather than necessarily telling us what it is that we should or shouldn't be doing. I th think the principal <coughs> issue uh, in contemporary times, though, is is really about um, the framework within which our media practice exists and to what extent, you know, there's, there's, there's two arguments about ethics. One is, do we provide a, a rules-based framework, a legislative framework, or do we... Uh, encourage individuals to uh, hold themselves to account. So there's a dis distinction between the two in terms of, um, you know, you might argue that an e a, a set of ethical prescriptive, uh, uh, you can do this, you can't do that, commandments almost, are, are essential and they play a significant role. There are certain things that we, you know, we value as a society collectively that shape how and when we can do things. But otherwise, everything else is kind of down to the individual and the associations that an individual can make based on the, the their ability to uh, think things through, uh, think a situation through and understand to what extent their actions and their responses to other people might impact and affect those other people in a negative way. So we have a, a short-term thinking about that and expedience, but we also have a long-term thinking about thinking about future generations. And you know what might affect us as individuals uh, might clearly be driven by you know a sense of emotion, a sense of uh, uh, you know it ticks some of our boxes. So, so, some people are much more open uh, in their thinking, and some people are much more um, conservative in their thinking. In that you know the the the, the rules base should be open and flexible, and other people think no, there are guiding precepts that we should stick to. Uh, and, and there's always an oscillation between the two. This is the thing about, you know, uh, uh, having the mechanisms to make sense of stability and change. You can't do one without the other. Uh, and as social values are reinterpreted and as the social circumstances change and as we evolve um, uh, from a kind of 
we take on board different perspectives and we uh, begin to understand different points of view, then our values might change. And based on our experiences and things that were held as absolutes in the past, in the future, may not be. And having a society that is open to that, <coughs> excuse me, is very much about, you know, kind of at one, what point does society step in and put in rules and at what point is it down to the individuals? And there's always that, you know, it's it, it's always down to um, that balance between the two. I would weight that towards the individual. Uh, I think, you know, you, you, a friend of mine described it as uh, you can, you, some countries, well, the UK has lots of signs everywhere telling you what you can't do. Don't play football. Don't drive past this speed you know don't walk on this side of the pavement there's all sorts of things that you're told you can and can't do whereas other societies like this they don't have any of that it's it's kind of expected that you figure out the rules for yourself and as as young children you know you're, you're brought up in a culture where respecting uh, uh the other people's uh, social demeanour is important, but you don't need somebody policing you to do that. Uh, and that's, you know, there's, there's a question about how we achieve that and and what happens when things go wrong and whose responsibility it is. But, you know, we, we don't want to be, regu- you know, not many of us want to be endlessly regulated by small rules. Uh, and because then that implies that somebody is employed to police any infraction from those rules that we've undertaken and that becomes more about the process of managing the rules than about the values and sometimes breaking the rules is the ethical thing to do and you know so it's 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 fraught with personal and individual conscience decisions but also collective conscience decisions as well and at what point do we codify them and how do we manage disputes and you know what kind of uh, laws do we have in place to prevent uh, discrimination and to uh, define and and support so uh, that's the wrong way around um, to to those people who wish to put push things to the extremes those people who are willfully hateful those people who are willfully uh, antagonistic towards other people um you know they're, they're, what do you do in those circumstances if you're being dangerously provocative <clears throat> i mean it, you know the, the the one of the lessons of of growing up in liverpool is that you if if you provocatively annoy people you're likely to get a smack in the face uh you know punch in the gob as as we say and um you know at, at what point is your <laughs> is it your responsibility to act sensibly and proportionally and accountably and at what point is do, do you wind other people up to the point where they uh, uh you know they they get back at you uh and we don't want a society that is purely about that that kind of lumpen uh antagonism you know we have to sit down and we have to consolidate our differences of opinion so we need uh institutional frameworks that help us to do that and things like you know jury, uh, 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 oversight from the court judicial oversight educational and institutions um because we need to develop a set of social norms and agreed social social norms that are based around the idea that it is possible to have a broad wide open free sense of public discourse and discussion where we can deliberate contentious issues without resorting to antagonism and name calling and um and and just purely uh the vitriol that we see on social media and which is amplified by social media because the social media companies realize that they can make lots of money about through antagonism so there, there has to be something more and our, and as community commu- community communicators and community media advocates and practitioners our responsibility is what we're saying is that this is a way community media is a way of bringing to get people together to form a a, a, a mutual sense of uh, engagement which is respectful of one another st- as a starting point um, but we want to do that in a way which is, you know, the technology is changing so quickly that the, it's, you know, we having an open media platform 
where people with different views can express them and where people can be challenged on those views, but it can be done in such a way that it, again, as I say, it doesn't necessitate um, a, a kind of either on the one hand institutional control uh, where anything that you say has to be authorised by somebody in a marketing department or the other way around is that, you know, it's it's so open and it's so uh, uh, free that anything goes and anybody who's hurt or offended or, you know, mildly troubled is told to go, well, you know, you need to develop a thicker skin. There's There's a way of dealing with this, which is about social deliberation, which has to be stronger then sim- this is why I'm against leaving things purely to the market-driven exercise or purely to the state-managed exercise. It's the space in between, that collaborative, cooperative, um, develop- developmental, uh, dis- discourse-based, deliberative uh, space in the middle where we come together as our community, you know, within our communities to figure this out rather than having people doing it for us or telling us how it should and shouldn't be. So there's got to be this sense of kind of continuous dialogue that goes with this. So we're looking at, you know, a set of ethics then is uh, based around the idea of a a kind of serviceable code. And uh, in in general terms, this this code uh, is is quite practical. Um, And, you know, I'm sure we could look at this on the basis of saying, yes, we, we would agree to this. But then other people might not and they might not agree to this on the basis that they see an opportunity for themselves to foster discontent and distrust so i'm well aware of my perspective on this that i'm i'm a liberal social democrat uh, and that i view uh, there's certain things in this that i view as uh, uh, entirely valuable but other people uh, in in different parts of the world don't see this because it's about um I suppose power. So seeking truth and reporting it is an essential element. So that you know, as community media uh, producers, that we should be honest, fair, and courageous in gathering stories and sharing those stories and interpreting the information that those stories tell us, and that we should always be accurate as much as possible it we're given our resources that we can you know we we don't take on board things which are in error or which can't be verified and this is something like the you know the ofcom broadcast code and the impressed uh, regulation code for for uh, news organizations is really focused on and i think they're a guide rail for good quality standard deliberation and we've seen this in recent weeks with the now Ofcom, multiple Ofcom investigations into GB News about bias, political bias, and how it leads to, you know, kind of a lowering of standards or potentially a lowering of standards of impartiality and treating the public with due regard for facts and evidence and things like that. So it's really, really essential. (coughs) Tied with that is the idea that we reflect the diversity of our communities and this, this, this is you know in, in some some areas this is easier to do than in other areas. So there is definitely an imbalance and a historic imbalance about representation of people from uh, from ethnic minority backgrounds uh, or from uh, sexual or orientation backgrounds. Uh, and you know, we don't all have equal access uh, to make a contribution. But there are other ways that diversity. Diversity of opinion, diversity, cognitive diversity. You know, we don't all see the world in the same way, and we often have different points of view. And we need to reflect and find a way to engage with one another on the basis of an open dialogue between be, between members of each community that reflects the broad range of opinions. And one of the current criticisms about you know, mainstream British media over the last decade or so is that it didn't reflect. A, a, a sense of the, the the diversity of views. So, you know, for many uh, many people, Brexit was a shock, and for many people, it was a confirmation because the media narratives that were predominant kind of you know didn't really have have enough latitude to en- encompass both points of view, and and you know that 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 was a it leads to if you, if if our media isn't 
uh, exploring all of the options and all of the broad ranges of opinion and doing so in a way which is uh, which explains how we operate as, as communities, then then there's a problem. So there has to be a high level, higher level of accountability for our information gathering, our news gathering, uh, and how we go about reporting and practice and things. And this is this is really the hard grind. So the, one of the uh, things that we've talked about on our decentered media projects in the past is the community reporters model, which is about training other ordinary people. Uh, to to be news reporters, and that we you know we we are here to tell our own stories and not have those stories told for us. And we have the technology now in order to be able to do that. We've always we've had the technology for a long time, and we just need the commitment to saying, well, don't let other people shape who you are. Get out there and share and 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 explain you know celebrate and uh, question the the uh, the the. The communities that we live in and are a part of for ourselves by taking photographs, writing news articles, creating blogs, taking part in community radio programs, putting out our own podcasts, whatever form it takes. But we do so on the basis that we reflect the values of accuracy, clarity and fairness um, and that we, you know, any, any errors that we do is we correct them as soon as possible. So, our, you know, we're, we're trying to in preserve the integrity of the process of communication. Um, and I think we can do that because we sit down together and that we are volunteer. Most community media projects, most forms of community engaged communication are voluntary. People don't do it because they are being paid. When you're part of a paid project, you know, organization, you know, you kind of do what your organisation tells you to do and you do it in the way that they tell you to do because they're paying your bills. But when you get a group of volunteers come together, you have to find a different set of, you know, what motivates people to want to come and give up their time as volunteers. So the the, the what drives that sense of participation is different from what drives professionalised and paid for uh, contributions to creating stories and... and, and uh, uh, discussing things in 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 our uh you know in, in in our groups so it's it's kind of um we're not trying to discriminate i think that's the you know it's really hard to do this but you know it's and you have to discriminate at some point but the basis we have in the uk which is perhaps one of the most valuable pieces of uh, legislation that's uh, uh, working its way through even you know 13 years after it was uh, it, it was enacted which is the equality act 2010 and that you know provides a framework for the provision of services uh, and uh, the the operation of public institutions and things without discrimination or preference based on age ethnicity culture race uh, ability, gender reassignment, and uh, sexual orientation, sex, and and other factors, and that you know is a, is is the touchstone. And I think it's if we're moving away from that as an ethical set of values, we can get into some murky water. Whereas that kind of clarity that it brings, uh, it's not to say that it can't be improved, but there's a clarity to it that uh, actually keeps us. You know, tr you know, kind of engaged with with one another in a way which is, uh, um, you know, verifiable. Is that we can see who where the differential outcomes are. So, you know, we 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 want to be able to measure if we put a process and a system in place, and it has differential outcomes for different uh, groups. There was a report in the newspaper today about uh, a a, pol a former police officer with the military who was given uh, asked to undertake fitness tests which did not respect did not take into account uh, the her, her her sex they were designed for men and women could not on average achieve the results that were being expected and there was no proportional taking account of that well that's you know that's kind of an essential thing that we need to do uh, just from the point of view of fairness and so from an ethical point of view you know fairness is one of the main drivers of this and so the the, the decision making process itself uh, is is part of this ethical uh, consideration uh, so if there's a conflict that arises based around the codes and the laws and the policies that we and the practices that we have 
is that there is a way for us to um, work through this in a in a in a way which resolves this without uh, uh, an, you know annoying one another. That's the, the easiest way I can put it. You know, it's like it has to be something which is uh, um, which brings people together. Uh, rather than necessarily, yeah, we might agree to disagree, and that's fine. At that point, then you say, okay, well, there's a there, there's a there, there's a point where you establish your own separate uh, identity with something, and that's that's what you know, communities are about. Communities are not homogenous, um, and subservience to the general aims of the community is is no more desirable than service to the. Uh, aims of the individual would be desirable in their own extremes there's something where we have to respect the virtues and values of individual liberal thinking and also our social engagement as collectively uh, uh doing things so you know that's the dynamic of a of a social you know, a modern social democracy anyway so this is this is kind of um we can definitely uh, uh plow this Borough for many many uh, sessions, uh, and I'm kind of we'll keep coming back to this because I think the framework, and and this is just touching the you know this is just skimming off the top. This is not uh, in any way uh, a deep understanding of this, and it will take a lot of a lot more considered conversation and discussion to go into this. If you want to take part in this conversation and discussion. You can visit uh, the website, which is decentered.co.uk. Uh, we're on Twitter and Instagram, and probably Mastodon and Threads at Decentered Media. I think that's what it is. Um, but yeah, so uh, look forward to seeing you at the uh, the meetup, uh, which you can subscribe to via Patreon.com/slash Decentered Media. Uh, but let's you know, let's let's think about these ideas and think about ways that we can turn our practical experience into policy and turn our policy into something which supports practical experience. So, you know, let's find out how this works in practice, not just in theory, but let's also think about how the theory works so that we can make the best of it. So anyway, I am now going to go and have a cup of tea and uh, I've done quite well uh, with my cold, but, uh, goodness it's 40 minutes i've been talking so i'm sure you've had enough of me for now but until next time take care visit decentered.co.uk or follow us on instagram and twitter at decentered media